Oh, okay. So uh, let's uh, move into the uh, next unit of this uh, particular course. Now, in the last unit, you have seen that uh, different types of uh, MOS based amplifier like uh, common source, common gate, common and also the cascode amplifier with different types of loads like uh, resistive load, then uh, current source load, then we have uh, diode connected load and each and every load they are having their uh, related uh, advantages and disadvantages. Now what we have seen in the last, uh, last module that whenever uh, we are going to design some Amplifier, suppose I am having an amplifier like this with a black box. The input and output, both of them are applied with respect to the Hopefully, you have some basic idea about this differential amplifier in your last, uh, I mean, in the last semester you studied uh, electronic circuits. There also we have uh, discussed the same thing, the differential amplifier, but that differential is constructed using VJ. The only difference is that this time we will be putting those, uh, <coughs> those designs using the MOSFET circuits, right? So basically, you know uh, that uh, for the single layer, what is the difference between the single layer and the differential signal? Hopefully, you know, you can remember. What is the basic difference between a single ended signal and a differential signal? Can you remember? Single ended means that means the signal which is measured with respect to a reference ground voltage, with respect to that I am measuring. And whenever, for, for example, suppose this is my circuit, so if you have some input, for example, let's have. Uh, the input is something like that. Let it be, say, zero. So let it be zero, and suppose this is one, this is minus one, for example. So with respect to this reference line, I am measuring, right? So I can, okay, this is nothing but say this. If it is xt or if this is v in. So I can write that this Bn is equal to 1 times sine of omega t, for example. Now what happens for uh, differential signals? In case of differential signal, you understand that you have basically two signals. So here you have, suppose we have a circuit 1, for which the input is Vn1, the output is uh, say uh, obtained at Va, and at it 2 the input is Vn2 and the output is obtained at at the terminal B, uh, terminal B, and the signal that you are measuring is nothing but the difference between these two. That means V out is equal to V A minus G B. That is V A B. We call it V A B. So this time, the signal is not measured with respect to ground. <coughs> Rather, the differential signal is nothing but the difference between the two signals. And we say this, so this differential signal is having some property. Basically, they have two properties. The same, the same thing that we have discussed in the last semester also. First of all, a signal is said to be a differential signal if it is on a fixed DC level. Right. It must ride on a fixed DC level. That is one thing. And then the variation of this signal with respect to this DC level should be equal and opposite. For example, I don't know whether this has been there or not. Let me check. Okay, this is not there anyway. So let me just once again show you what you mean by this differential signal. So suppose you have a DC level like this, a constant DC level, VDC. So this VDC should be same for both of these two signals. Right? If I consider the signal at point A and the signal at point B, node A and node B. They must stay at the same DC level, that is VDC. And then, one signal, suppose one signal is experiencing a variation like this. Let's assume some variation. With this value is equal to say, VM. And the second signal looks something like that. This is also, this difference is also Vm. That means, with respect to the common DC level, they have equal and opposite expression. They have equal and opposite expression. So what is the advantage out of this, what you are getting? 
what advantage you are getting out of this? If I have a differential pair, something like that, a differential signal. For example, if I consider, suppose, let, let me name, suppose uh, this signal, this, this one, this pink one, let me call, let it be VA, and this green one, let me call VB. Right? So what I can write, this VA, this V like some VDC plus some VM sine of omega t and this VB can be represented like VDC minus VM sine of omega t. Okay? So individually, this, if I uh, visualize the signal VA and VB separately, so individually they are measured with respect to ground. But if I consider the difference VA minus VB, or if I consider them as a pair, pair of signal, then they are lying on a fixed syllable, that is VDC, and they exhibit an opposite excursion, equal and opposite. Whenever this particular signal, this VA, is at its maximum peak over there, then VB must be at its minimum peak. Now, for example, if I consider the signal VA only, so VDC plus VM sine omega. If I for the timing, let's assume that VD is equal to 0, then V is equal to VM sine omega. So the variation is from plus VM to minus VM. Right? Plus VM to minus VM. So what is the total excursion? 2 VM. Right? Similarly, for VB, VDC is equal to 0, the variation is from minus VM to plus VM. Right? That means once again the total excursion is 2 VM. Right? Now, if I consider the difference VA minus VA minus VB, both of them are like fixed DC, so obviously this VDC gets cancelled, whether it is 0 or non-zero. Then what you are left with, VA minus VB, that signal is given by VM sin omega t minus or minus VM sin omega t, that is equal to twice VM sin omega t. So now the fluctuation is from plus to plus 2 VM to minus 2 VM, from plus 2 VM. So the total difference is, I mean the, the range is 4. For the individual signal, individual signal, single ended signal, plus VM to minus VM and for the differential signal the expression is plus VM to minus 2 VM. Now for that to happen you have to ensure that these two conditions must hold. What are those, those two conditions? The first condition is that both of them must, must lie on a fixed DC level. It's not like VDC1 and VDC2. It should be same. And second thing is that the fluctuation with respect to this VDC, this constant level, this fluctuation is equal and opposite. If I have a VM sin omega the other one should be minus VM sin omega. It's not like VM1 VM. Equal and opposite discussion. That is the basic idea of the differential signal, and hopefully, you have already covered this one in your uh, electron circuits course. Now, the question is that why should we go for the differential signal? Because ultimately, uh, whenever I say it's a differential amplifier, that means we'll be getting something uh, out of a differential amplifier, we'll be getting some differential signal. We provide some differential signal in, uh, as input, and we get some differential signal as output. That is the basic notion of differential signal in contrast to your uh, signal and amplifier. Now the question is that why should you go for a dimension amplifier at all? The life was good with a single ended amplifier. Of we have also studied, I mean, you know, analog the course, we have studied open, right? Huh? To reduce effect of noise. Reference to cancel noise from the cancel information. To some extent. To some extent. Because whenever the differential signal itself is generated, at that point of time, if the noise is already coupled, then you cannot do anything. But during the time of propagation, suppose for example, I am taking some, say, ECG signal. You know that ECG signal is taken from the arms, from the ankle, this is signal is taken. Now done, the, the electrodes are placed in both of these ones. Right. And both of these two arms, electrodes are placed. And accordingly, you are having two signals. So, so VL and VR, for example. <coughs> left, left arm, or you can call it like VLA and VRA, something like that. Now, whenever you have a signal itself, at that point of time, when the electrodes itself is, is capturing the signal from your arm, patient, at that point of time, the signal, if the noise is already coupled into it, then you can't do anything. But when the signal is propagated towards the amplifier, at that point of time, if if you have if if the if the signal itself captures the noise from the from the environment, <coughs> it is expected that the way these two signals 
in a given environment the the corresponding signal i mean the noise which is which is coupled into the signal i mean this is the type of the noise is almost the same the way the the noise affecting the left arm signal and the right arm signal they are the same right so now if you take the difference between vla and the arm and right arm if you now if you take the difference so this time what happens is effect of the noise can be cancelled so potential signal is immune to noise to some extent and obviously i have already seen that the available swing is also more for a differential signal as compared to a single ended signal because that thing we have already discussed in the in the last uh, semester the same thing so now our basic idea here and the second thing is obviously the if there is some fluctuation in the in the supply line also i am assuming that this vcc is constant but suppose there is a sub, there is a fluctuation in the supply line that can also be uh, Neglected if I if I consider some differential amplifier. So in your game one and game two, they are other level problems. Which one? Which one? Yes, I am coming to that. In that case, it is not called differential signal, but what is the problem? You understand? Okay. So already have identified uh, two. Uh, pro, I mean. Uh, Two properties. First one, two advantages out of a differential signal. The first one, is the high uh, swing available as compared to single single ended signal. And the second one, the second point is, it is immune to noise. And third is that it can also it is also insensitive to any supply line fluctuation. So far, I assume that my supply is DC. And accordingly, we have developed all these expressions, right? All the expressions, the and then the gain calculations, everything was based on the concept that the, my period is. But suppose period is not constant. Period is also changing. That is going to affect. If I consider a single amplifier, something like that, a single ended amplifier which is fabricated using a MOS, a simple source amplifier, simple, simplest common source amplifier. Now, if you have, I mean, if the supply is not constant. You have a fluctuation something like that. Even if you provide a sinusoidal signal like this, there is a phase reversal. There is a phase reversal gain. What is the gain? Minus gm times rt. Let's say the phase reversal. And see if if this is not constant, if the supply is not constant, then obviously even if your uh, your sinusoidal signal is a pure sinusoidal signal, it doesn't contain any harmonics. Nothing. Only one thing. Only one frequency. But in the output, what you are getting a smooth sinusoidal signal. Suppose everything is is not present, and nothing is present here. There is no noise. I mean, in, inside this uh, environment, there is no noise present. Uh, we are happy with the swing. But if the supply, there is a fluctuation in the supply line, then also, if, even if you provide a, a smooth signal, a smooth sinusoidal <laughs> wave, something like that, you won't be getting a a, a sinusoidal pure signal at the output side. Now that we can take into account if I if I if I just uh, have a similar kind of uh, another stage in the form of a differential pair. So here, for differential pair, what do we have? We have this particular. This is a single stage. I can consider a single stage. We have only one uh, resistance. I mean, uh, the very simplest model here. Only one resistance. The drain resistance R T and the source is connected to the ground. And we assume that proper biasing is there. We assume that the biasing is present. So accordingly, this uh, MOS is operating. It has to operate in saturation. Otherwise, you understand the basic notion of amplification cannot be obtained. And similarly, uh, so now this is M1, M1, another such another such stage M2 with the same RT. Might not be the same RT. We'll look into that. If these two RTs are not same, what is the problem? Now let's start with the same RT and let's assume that okay, both of these two amplifiers, I mean, both of these two MOS devices, M1 and M2, they share the equal properties. They are equivalent in terms of their say W ratio, in terms of the GM, everything they are equivalent in terms of their uh, the threshold voltage. So in terms of all the in, in, internal parameters of a MOS, this M1 and M2 they are equivalent. That means it's a replica, right? Then uh, let's have uh, a signal like this. For the timing, let's assume that okay, these two signals that I am providing at say uh, uh, MOS one and MOS two, if I call signal two. 
they are basically the differential signal, a differential pair. And accordingly, we'll be getting some V out one and V out two. Okay. Now the thing is that okay. Okay, let's spend some time on the swing, the envelope swing. In light of the, these two, uh, these two uh, amplifiers, the left one is your single ended amplifier that you already started in unit uh, number one, last unit, and uh, the right right one is the is the differential amplifier. Okay. What will be the swing? What do you think? What will be the swing for the left amplifier? I mean the single ended amplifier that you already studied. What is, what is the available swing? What do, what do you feel? Two G M R T. Two G M R T. Two G M R T. Why sir? Why G M R T? Full swing. Swing means what? I mean uh, at the output node. At the output node over here, at the output node, output terminal, you have what is that voltage? Basically, the drain voltage. Source is grounded. This is drain voltage, na? We have the drain voltage. Source is grounded. So, this is basically the VDS. Right. So, is there any restriction on VDS? What do you, what do you feel? Is there any restriction on VDS? It must be in saturation, right? That means there should be a, a, a minimum value or maximum value. Which one? Huh? A minimum value. What is that? Vgs minus Vth. So the drain voltage, the output voltage, the the minimum value of which cannot be less than the gate source minus Vth. Isn't it? Abdullah. Remember or not? Saturation, the relation, saturation and the cutoff, uh, saturation and the uh, cutoff and the trio, those three regions. The condition was that, the condition was that this VT should be greater than or equal to this overdrive that is gate source minus threshold, so that the device remains in the saturation region. Right? So, VGS minus VTH or VTH1, whatever it may be. <coughs> so, so, that is the minimum value for the drain source potential or the output potential here for the left amplifier. Right. What can be the maximum value for this output voltage? VDT, that's the maximum. <coughs> so, the swing is from VDT to this VGS minus VTH. That is the swing. VDS, V out 1 or V out cannot be less than the gate source minus threshold, cannot be less than the overdrive across the supply, EDD. It should be in between that. <laughs> so, what is the range available to us? VDD minus gate source minus threshold, VDD minus this uh, overdrive, that is the range available for uh, this V out for this single ended amplifier, which has been. What happens to this amplifier, this differential amplifier, what happens to this amplifier? What happens to this, is it, will it be the same or different? The right hand side, if you consider the amplifier, there you have this V out one. V out one should be greater than VGS minus VTH one. So the range is from VDD minus this. Similarly for the V V out two is opposite in that. Same thing but in the opposite direction. So what is the available range now? The available range of the swing is increased. Get the point. So the swing is increased. Anyway, so. Yeah, so okay, we have uh, discussed this one over there. Okay, so let's consider this fundamental amplifier, fundamental dimension amplifier with one drain resistance, each side source is grounded. 
right one grain resistance is side same rd and rt both side same resistance source is grounded the simplistic uh, common source amplifier now if i am having an input signal like this is riding on vdc and plus vm minus vm something like that and they are uh, this is something like this vm2 so i can call this vn1 as i can call this vn1 as let me call this v equal to vdc plus let me call this small v in maybe anything and here this v in 2 i can write like vdc minus this okay and remember that dc level we have already discussed this one in the linear circuit electron circuit course this vdc level is known as a common modulus common modulus and that signal this v in, uh, this small v in signal is known as the differential signal. so this signal this v in 1 and v in 2 is a combination of a common mode signal along with a differential signal so now let's let's uh, focus on the on the left uh, mos on what happens if we apply this v in 1 there okay let's assume that this v in 1 is itself riding on a dc that means you should not be bothered about the bias right because already riding on a dc fixed dc so if it is uh, i mean if it is uh, having some zero bias doesn't create any problem and uh, assuming that this vdc is greater than threshold voltage right so what happens to the output side this v out one what do you expect how does it look like this is your input signal this is your input signal input signal how does it look like this output output is a magnified version and the phase reversal right so, so you know what is your input v in one this one the output is something like that phase reversed and magnified done okay so then what happens to the the right hand uh, mos this m2 is riding on the same dc level but the opposite the opposite so your input is something like that is red one v in 2 so this will be the output right and if you take this, obviously it's nothing but sinusoidal signal if you take this uh, minus red this green minus red how does it look like this green minus red this green minus red will look something like that this one yes or no now if it is like uh, if i call uh, this difference if i call this say let it be say dash this one is be dash then what about this difference this is speed as similar to also speed as no this is also speed as what about that difference four speed as four speed as fine this is four speed as that is a basic understanding i am assuming that okay there is no bias and uh, Uh, you have some uh, this dc level dc bias is provided from the signal itself but they obviously there is some limitations associated with this circuit so we have to move forward and we have to modify the circuit accordingly and i end up what is the limitation lying here in this particular case there is some limitation obviously but what is the limitation the uh, the operation of the amplifier does it depend on it can we expect that this kind of behavior this kind of amplifier signal will pop in for any such uh, signal uh, condition yes so the 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 input convert level that which has been identified by the dotted line 
this VNCM dotted line based on this. Based on this, there might be where one transistor might move into the cutoff. There is a chance. Now, here the VNCM is lying. Suppose I am having considering a gain of say 10, for example, gain of 10. So, if it is like, uh, say, suppose this is, this is say 10 millivolt, or if it is say uh, 100 millivolt, this variation, this input signal is 100 millivolt, a gain of 10 means uh, you have uh, this, this one is how much? This difference? This is 1 volt, 100, 100 millivolt is your input fluctuation, and uh, the gain is 10, for example. So, obviously, this, this, this one is, this should be 1, one volt. Now, suppose VNCM is placed over there. Let's say, let's assume that VDT is equal to, say, let it be 3 volt and it's placed at, say, 1.5 volt. Okay? VDT is 3 volt, supply 3 volt, and this is placed at 1.5 volt. So, if this fluctuation is 1 volt from here to here, if it is 1 volt, so here it is 0.5 volt only. So, if it is 0.5 volt, so if it is 1.5 volt, so this is this is 1 volt. Is one volt, right? So let's assume that it's 0.5 volt. No problem, right? So it's always 0.5. Suppose your VNCM is not at 1.5 volt. You don't have any control on VNCM. 1.5 volt. Suppose the VNCM itself is say at one, or say 0.8 volt. 0.3 volt. Say for example, right? So had this been the case, then obviously. Let it be a 0.8 volt or might be say close to 3 volt. Either it's close to ground, I mean, it's not 0.5 means what? It's away in the middle. 0 to 3, 3 is supply, so it we're in the middle. 1.5 the, the safest, safest possibility, we're in the middle. The maximum expression that you can have. Remember now that this DC operating point in your BJT course for maximum swing, we have to place it in the middle. If it is VCC, we have to place it at DCC by 2. The DC point. So here we don't have an explicit DC. The DC is provided by the VNCM itself. So if it, if it so let's place, place it at 1.5 volt. Now if it is at 1.5 volt, so you are the you are in the safest position. <coughs> but suppose it's not at 1.5 volt because you don't have any control of You don't know how from where the signal is coming. You don't know from where the signal is coming. We have designed the amplifier, and now we have seen that the input uh, common mode not at 1.5 volt, rather it is placed at say as 0.8 or say at 2.6 volt, either close to the supply or close to the ground. So you'll see that either, so obviously in one case the, uh, the transistor will, will in, move, move into the, uh, the trial, your uh, the gate source voltage, that voltage will be less than the threshold voltage, the device will not be on at that point of time. Or in some other case, you can also find that this voltage is clipped off, the output is clipped off. So the output cannot be more than 3 volt. 3 volt is maximum. It can't be higher than that. In both of these two cases, you have the possibility of signal distortion. Right. So, for that reason, uh, you cannot use the simplistic model itself only. You have to do some change. You have to modify the circuit to some extent. That means the DC operating point should be finalized. So, what happens here if VNCM is large, suppose initially VNCM is at 1.5 volt, well, that's great. The moderate drain can you can expect. Now, if VNCM is high, suppose it is 2.6 volt or 2.7 volt, you have high gate source, <coughs> fixed threshold voltage, high gate source. So, what happens? More drain current. More drain Right? On the other hand, if you have VNCM like 0 0.7 volt, 0 0.8 volt, you have less drain current. US is on, but less drain current. Now, now, you have to ensure that these drain current should be, I mean, the current should be constant. Right? It should not be dependent on the input component. So, what has to be done? If the DC drain current is constant, what has to be done? You have to bias this. You need to bias this, this combination, using a current source. Right. 
using a current source, you have to bias this. Something like that. Yes, so now we have this ISS current. This ISS current. And if I assume that uh, initially, so I, as you understand that there are two different types of uh, analysis we have to perform. One is known as the, the common mode analysis, second one is known as the dimensional mode analysis. In common mode analysis, what happens? We don't uh, consider any input fluctuations. We are assuming that the, both of these two inputs, V0 and V2, they are having the same DC level. The DC analysis. And then the small signal analysis. Now, if it is something like that, suppose uh, V0 and V2, and one second I am assuming that. Uh, this variation is something like that. V1 goes plus minus something like that and V2 goes minus plus something like that. Equal and opposite exertion. And this time what happens? Yeah, let me place. Let me erase this one. V0 is this. V2 is this. Equal and opposite. And they are riding on fixed DC. This DC level is fixed. This is fixed DC level, same DC level. If it is VDC, this is also VDC. Same VDC. Now, for the time being, let's assume that this uh, excursion signal variation is not present. Only you have the DC level. Only DC level is present. Then, what will be the behavior of the circuit? How does it react? If you have only the DC signal present, only DC signal present, gradually we will obviously incorporate these variations. For the time, let's assume that only v, v DC is present. That, that means both of these two signals, although we are operating from the two V0 and V2, we can also connect them together. Because the values are same, the DC level, the DC analysis we are going to perform. What do you expect? What do you expect? Both of them, I mean, the, they are for M1 and M2, the sources are tied together. Right? Sources are tied together and the gate voltage are also the same. Same gate voltage because the DC analysis, same, same DC. Right? Same threshold voltage, assuming same threshold. Right? Same overdrive. And okay, this is in uh, saturation. Then you have same current. <coughs> same current. Two branches, left side, right side, same current. Total current is ISS. Same current. ID1 and ID2, same current. Why? Because same gate voltage. If, the, if it is driven by the same DC level, the same gate voltage, sources are tied together, same gate to source, same threshold voltage because the MOS are, uh, I mean, equivalent. Right? The M1 and M2, the M1 is the replica of M2 and vice versa. And uh, same threshold voltage, same gate to source voltage. So, same and uh, obviously uh, the same resistance also there. So, you have the same current. And obviously, <coughs> this V out and V out must be the same. What is that current? This current is nothing but this total current by 2. <coughs> right? ISS by 2. So, at V out 1, what, what you are supposed to get? VDT minus. ISS by 2 times RT. At V out 2 also you will be getting this VDT minus ISS by 2 RT. So, this is the point. VDT minus ISS by 2 RT. When V0 minus V2 is equal to 0. That means V0 equal to V2. Right? Clear? Then, suppose, now suppose I am allowing the V0 minus V2 to Move to the positive very large. That means V0 is much much greater than V2. Keeping your DC level fixed, DC level is fixed, but now I am allowing the small signal, this differential signal to act upon at minus V2. Ideally, suppose it is going towards infinity. What is happening then? So you, you should expect that the more current should flow through M1, less current through M2. And a point will come when we expect that the M2 will move into the cutoff. 
So at that point of time, the total current will be driven by this M1. What is that total current? This total current is given by ISS. Right? So at that point of time, what should be your uh, P out one? VDT minus ISS time RT. What will be your V out? No current through M2? So only VDT. So expect when M1 minus M2 is very, very large, M1 minus M2 is very, very large. At that point of time, the extreme point, here you can expect that this V out 1 is given by, this is V out 1, V out 1 is given by VDT minus I system RT. And at that point of time, your uh, V out 2 is given by VDT only. Right? Now, consider the, the reverse scenario. When V in 1 minus V in 2 is much, much negative, that means, suppose it is, uh, is, uh, is approaching towards minus infinity. Then what happens? Minus infinity. The reverse thing happens. Reverse thing happens. That means at that point of you will see that now this time the M2 will carry the entire current. It will carry this IDD ISS current. And M1 will not carry any current. So point M, V1 minus V2 is equal to approaching towards minus infinity. So then you will find that this M2 is, I mean the, uh, the output voltage at the, at the drain 2, this V out 2 is given by VDT minus ISS RT and your uh, V out uh, 1 at that point of time is given by VDT, this one. V out 1 is equal to VDT and V out 2 is equal to VDT minus ISS, ISS RT. So I know only these three conditions. At one point when this V in 1 and V in 2 they are same. That means they are having the same DC levels, no small signal present, no differential signal present. This is the point what they are. Both of these V out and V out 2 they are same. In one case V in 1 minus V in 2 is very, very large. Then we reach over there, that means V out 1 is given by VDT minus ISS RT, V out is equal to VDT. And the other case so when V in 1 minus V in 2 is much much less than negative, much much less than 0, is approaching towards uh, negative infinity. Then V out is given by uh, VDT minus ISS RT while V out is VDT. In between the fluctuation you don't know. Can you remember what was the fluctuation for your BJT case? Almost the same, I mean, uh, they are also, you have these three uh, points, these three extreme conditions. I mean, V in 1 equal to V in 2, V in 1 is much, much greater than V in 2, V in 1 is much, much less than V in 2. These are the three conditions. One case V in 1 equal to V in 2, the DC condition. Is V in 1 much much greater than V in 2 and the last case V in 1 much much less than V in 2. Right. But uh, the fluctuation from this, v, from this VDD to VDD minus ISS RT through this VDD minus ISS RT, this fluctuation or this fluctuation, obviously the same fluctuation because they are symmetric in it. So for BJT case we have already discussed this one, the fluctuation, the corresponding uh, pattern which is followed by potential. Can you remember? No. Forget about that. Can I put a function? Who can can remember? No. Okay, forget about that. We don't require anything. Okay, so whenever we will do this mathematics, then understand what kind of this, what kind of uh, uh, this, uh, how, does, how does this card look like? Because this current voltage expression for BJT and the MOS is not the same. For MOS, it is. For MOS, the current voltage follows square law. Parabole. Right. And BJT? Exponential. It's exponential. BJT is exponential, for MOS, it is parabole. <laughs> so, uh, nature, I mean, the extreme natures will be the same. But the variation from VDD to VDD minus ISS RT through VDD minus VDD and inverse curve functions. This time, we, okay, we will study how it looks like. But uh, you understand that, uh, okay, these three, these three points uh, we, we understand, these three regions we understand. One is this region where V out 1 is V0 equal to V in 2, where V0 equal to V out 2. In other case, V0 minus V in 2 is much, much greater than 0. That means V0 is much, much greater than V in 2. You have this two extreme values, VDT minus, VDT and VDT minus, and the, uh, the last one, while V in 1 is less than V in 2, you have this and this, V out 1 is equal to VDT and V out 2 is equal to VDT minus ISSRT. Now, these are the extreme values. 
This analysis, hopefully, I understand that this analysis is known as a large signal analysis. Large signal analysis. That means I am a signal to vary from minus infinity to plus infinity. And this time, when, when I call it a differential amplifier, <laughs> this time the signal means the differential signal, not the individual signal. Differential signal. What is the differential signal? V1 minus V2. Now that difference can range from minus infinity to plus infinity through zero. So now if you find out the differential voltage V out 1 minus V out 2, so is nothing but the difference between this V out 1 minus V out 2. So, so V0 equal to V into or V0 minus V into is equal to 0, so you are over here. What is your output voltage? Differential output voltage? 0. Isn't it? Because this voltage, this is of them are same. When V out 1 minus, when V0 minus V into is much much greater than 0, this is the, uh, your V out 1 minus V out 2. V out 1 is equal to V D minus S is at D. V out 2 is equal to V D only. So, difference is to how much? Minus S is at D. This one. Okay. And when V 1 minus V into is much much less, then what is your V out 1? V out 1 is equal to V D and V out 2 is equal to V D minus And what is the difference? Plus S is at D. So, plus S is at D. Minus S is at D. I don't know the fluctuation, but I know these extreme values. This value is plus i is at d when v in 1 is much much less than v in 2. This value is minus i is at d when v in 1 is much much greater than v in 2. And this value equal to when v in 1 equal to v in 2. So, what is the takeaway? When v in 1 equal to v in 2, that means when both of these two signals are the same. Same signal. That means what? We have applied only the DC. Right. Even for a BJT or even for a MOS, you have seen that even for a MOS, the single strain amplifier, the MOS is driven by a, say uh, some signal which is having some DC level. You have some output voltage, now. some drain source voltage you have. VDD minus ID times R, that drain source voltage. Right. For example, suppose this is my. So simplistic side, something like this. This is VDD, RD, and this is your output voltage. And suppose input is some say two volt DC. You'll be getting some some kind will be there. Channel is created, some kind will be there, and what is the output voltage? VDD minus that kind times RD. That's it. Now what happens also? That is the scenario for single. Single and amplifier. Even if you have applied some DC, you will be getting some DC. Right. Now, what happens to this differential pair? If both of them, if V1 and V2, they are having the same value that is VDC or VNCM, what is the output? What is the output? Output is 0. Because this time the output is computed like V1 minus V2, not individually V1 or V2. It's computed V1 minus V2. And that difference is equal to zero. That means this differential amplifier is completely insensitive. It's completely insensitive to DC level. If it is uh, driven by this, if, if this differential pair is driven by some DC level and fixed DC level, remember fixed DC level, not like V1 and not, not like VDC1 and VDC2, same DC level, then the output that we are getting out of this differential pair, this output is equal to zero. And that condition is known as the, in, in, when, when this happens, we will call it the, the amplifier is in equilibrium. The amplifier is in equilibrium. That means V1 is equal to V2, they are having the same DC level, and the output voltage, this differential output voltage, is given by uh, 0 only. On the other hand, if the input, so obviously here it is 0, and that is none of our business because if, it, I mean, if the input, both of them are having the same value, we have not applied any small signal. Then, another extreme condition, when V in 1 is much much greater than V in 2, you understand that one transistor will, will move into the cutoff, right? Then also you find that the, what, is the, uh, what is the output voltage, this output voltage, that is a constant one, minus I is that is constant. Over here, you have some constant, or if you consider the other way, 
That means v in one is much much less than v in two over here. This is also constant. So region, this region, and that region. This is none of our, none of our business because we have plotted this one. This graph is for this graph is the variation of this differential output with respect to the differential input. V out one minus V out two, V in one minus V in two. Variation of the differential output with respect to the differential input. So, if you'd like to calculate the gain of this amplifier, how can I do that? How to calculate? This is not, this is known as the transfer characteristics, no? Input versus output. Slope. Slope. Slope of in transfer characteristics. Find out the gain. So here you find that. Here the slope is zero. Here the slope is also zero. <coughs> slope is zero. Here the slope is also zero. So we cannot operate the device over here, neither here nor here, there. And this is the DC condition. No amplification. So accordingly, we have to operate over here. And this slope, this slope will give you. This slope is obviously negative, as we understand. Slope is so this slope will give you the expression for the gain. Now today we have done some qualitative analysis. Qualitative we have observed how does it look like. And in the next class we will perform this uh, this mathematical calculation. Little bit tedious. Uh, little bit math. I mean the mathematics little bit tedious, but straightforward mathematics. And we will do that mathematics and we'll understand what will be the nature that nature. How does it vary from VDD to VDD minus ICRP? That we will establish in the next class.